Massive Chalice is the Kickstarter-funded tactical strategy game from Double Fine and Two Player Productions. And I warn you now, this video will feature the modern remake of XCOM as the benchmark for this genre. Massive Chalice on the face of it is quite an interesting concept. The idea that you use heroes to either fight on the battlefield, start new bloodlines, so you can make babies and babies equal more heroes. Uh, you can use them for research, that's heroes not babies, that would be weird if you could use babies for research. <laughs> or you can have them train other heroes. Now heroes are the main and only resource in the game. How you manage this will kind of determine how well you do when fighting the Cadence invasion. You see, the idea of the game is you're tasked with defending the realm from Cadence incursions. You must construct buildings on each province, taking note of the province's specific bonuses, and attempt to defend the new lands from attack. But here's the first thing which I felt was rather mediocre. You can only respond to one Cadence incursion. That means you must weigh up the pros and cons of leaving one invasion to corrupt the land it occupies. This is because the game only allows you to have one active team, and only lets you respond to one threat. Even when you have enough heroes to make multiple teams, it still restricts you to responding to one threat. When you spin the globe, so to speak, the years pass. Soon enough, heroes will begin to die. To begin with, this is fairly interesting as you attempt to rebuild bloodlines with new marriages, but very quickly this becomes extremely tedious. To the point that I kind of found myself assigning any old hero together without really taking into consideration their stats or what their offspring would be like. Permadeath is great, but when people die so often and you are constantly replacing them, it starts to become old very fast. There is also no way to remember particularly great heroes you've had. Again, going back to XCOM, I always enjoyed looking at the list of dead soldiers and reminiscing about their illustrious careers. I mean, I could name a load of soldiers which went on missions after mission, hundreds, well, yeah, and some of them had hundreds of kills and then they die to some sort of unfortunate accident with a grenade or something. But it's just not there in this game and I find that a bit weird. Now, little things like that, they connect you with the lives of the characters. I don't understand why it's not been included. It's just a weird thing to not have in. The map itself is also lifeless. I mean, you're playing this game for hundreds of years. You'd expect something to change. You'd expect, well, I guess life on the map. But no, the map remains the same, only changing when you build one building within a region. I don't care about graphical quality, what I care about is visuals. I would have liked to have seen a lot of detail on the map, the provinces maybe change over time. What about maintenance of buildings? What happens if keeps start to, I don't know, erode away and you have to sort of repair them? Anything, just anything would have been nice instead of staring at the same map because just nothing changes. But I do have to say I did enjoy the look of the game overall. The maps are not the best designs, namely because there's just generally a large open space, um, but they do look visually pleasing. The, the graphic design is, I would say it does work well. And you can see there is a bit of attention to detail, but it just lacks the I, I, the visual impact, I guess. World of Warcraft is a good example of what I'm trying to get at. It's a, a very dated graphics engine, but what they've managed to do with the art direction and the environment design makes the game so more than, than, than what it is. Because we all know it's got a poor graphics engine, but it looks really fantastic for what they, you know, what they work with. Let's talk about stats and hero progression. This is actually rather well done. Heroes level up and can unlock new abilities, which changes their playstyle somewhat. Uh, heroes also lose experience as well when they take damage, and that's pretty good. You know, that's I, I like features like that. You, you don't really want to take damage. You also like lose the ability to cast um, spells and stuff, and and you, well, basically lose the ability to, to use your abilities when you take too much damage. So let's talk about what I really, really don't like, and what makes Massive Chalice just a mediocre XCOM clone, and that's at best. And that's actually being quite generous to this. The combat is bland. It is really, really bland. Combat tends to take place in open areas with combatants simply standing around in the open, exchanging attacks and using abilities. There's no cover. Uh, no cover in the, in the sense of XCOM anyway. You can hide in bushes, but without a cover mechanic, the game's tactical strategy, well, it suffers. You've got no incentive to move to areas to obtain cover. Um, I just found myself running in and steamrolling the enemy time and time again. There's no flanking either, which again is kind of weird. You would expect those to be kind of staples of this genre, but again, I don't understand why they're not in this game. Heroes are not locked into a turn order, and I don't like this. Being locked into a turn order forces you to think about the outcome. It makes these games more difficult. Massive Chalice, yeah, it lets you move in any order during your turn, which, well, that basically means you can really take advantage of the enemy's positions, and quite frankly, it reduces the difficulty of the game tremendously. There's no reactive abilities. Well, there's none, at least to begin with. I would have really liked to have seen Overwatch or similar abilities come as standard on, say, ranged classes. That would have increased the tactical options, which in turn increases the enjoyment you would get from a tactical strategy game. And this is kind of my point with the game. It's bland and it cuts back or fails to include mechanics you're all familiar with in games from the same genre. And I'm just not sure why it does this. This is kind of a more specific personal opinion, but I also really dislike the narrators. Wow, what a 
watching this was just like seeing the battle at Screed's Gate again. We didn't tell you about that one, did we? I don't believe so. Screed's Gate. House of the Thieves without houses. <laughs> Heroes, crucibles are where the training regimens for the nation are set. Anybody can become a standard, but the more experienced one is, the more that will be passed on to trainees. And if the regiment is good, the trainees can even pick up skills from their standard to make up for their weaknesses. It is a lonely post, however. I don't know about that. Those training dummies are pretty lifelike. I mean, the way they deliver the lines, it's just so bland. Or, well, to be fair, it becomes bland very fast because they're constantly delivering samey lines over and over again. And I find them narrating when they don't really need to be narrating. And it's just, it's almost like background noise you don't want to listen to. And don't even get me started on that horn. Oh, my God. You know what I'm talking about if you've played the game. And I'm not going to add that to this video because the noise alone is absolutely terrible. For a company that prides itself on its storytelling ability, it's pretty crazy to see Massive Chalice really doesn't have a story. <laughs> so... You need to stop the Cadence invasion, and the way the story is delivered, and I say story very lightly, is through the Chalice, which is two personalities, which talk to you randomly. That's it. There is no story, as far as I'm concerned, which is pretty poor. So in conclusion, Massive Chalice is massively mediocre, I'm afraid. It'll hold your attention for maybe a few hours, as it did for me, but after that you'll come to realise it's a rather hollow and lifeless experience. An experience I doubt you'll have much will to continue. For a game that was kickstarted to the tune of $1.3 million, I'm afraid it's just not entertaining enough. There's just there's just not enough there to, to warrant that level of crowdfunding, I presume. Now, you've got to be aware that often people get confused with how much it takes to develop a game. $1.3 million, on the face of it, is maybe not that much to develop a game. But I still find myself thinking we, we should have got more for that money. You know, we, we really should have got more. I think it's a nice try by Double Fine and two-player productions, but they've totally missed the mark. If anyone is looking to get into tactical strategy games, then... Just check out XCOM. It'll be, it's, well, I know for a fact it's vastly cheaper. It's probably on sale somewhere right now. And it's just a better, a better game all around. I mean, the only, the only reason I could think that you would pick up Massive Chalice over XCOM or games like Xenonauts and things like that, although I must warn you, Xenonauts is a very hardcore experience, is maybe because you just absolutely like the fantasy setting of Massive Chalice. But that's the only reason I could ever see somebody picking it over those other games. See, the fact is, guys, it's just a mediocre XCOM clone set in a fantasy setting with a couple of different mechanics, but it cuts back on a load of the core mechanics you would expect to see in this genre. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. I've been Stylosa, and this is Unit Lost. If you like the video, then give it a thumbs up. That really helps a lot. Also, don't forget to comment on the video. Maybe you've got some counter arguments to my points. Maybe you're enjoying Massive Chalice. Maybe you're looking forward to picking up Massive Chalice in the future. Let me know. I really do like to take part in these discussions, and I like to see what other people have to say, especially when I make these this style of video. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter as well, which is at Unit Lost Gaming. And uh, I'll catch you next time, people. Toodaloo.